So we need to talk about some other symbols we use when talking about sets. One of those is the most basic and this symbol which is a stylized letter epsilon. This means is a member of and if it's crossed out unsurprisingly it means is not a member of. So for our previous set where set A is equal to the vowels of the English language or the English alphabet are these statements true or false? So the first one is saying that E is a member of A. The letter E is shown in the set A. Yes, it is. So yes, it is true that E is a member of A. If we go down, B is not a member of A. That is also true. A is not a member of A. When we look inside, there is the lowercase letter A, an English vowel, in the set which is given the uppercase symbol A. So you obviously have to be careful how you name your sets. So this is actually a false statement because A is in fact a member of A. And then finally, X is a member of A. No, it isn't. It's not there. So we can see that the first two are true and the second two are false symbolic statements. So when there's something missing in everyday use, we have a special symbol that we use and it can be used in sets too. Yes, just a string of three dots. It's called an ellipsis. That's its special name. Don't confuse it with the plural of ellipse, the squished circle, which is spelled ES. So it means we've not written everything just like in everyday use. If we look at the following two sets, we can see that Set B has an ellipsis in the middle and it's representing the five numbers that have been left out and we can clearly see from the numbers that are there what the pattern of the set is. So we can use the ellipsis for convenience to avoid writing the whole set. In the second case, this is an infinite set. It shows that after the ellipsis, the terms go on forever again in the pattern that has been shown by what we can already see. So in this case, we might assume that this is the set of all positive even numbers. So we just need to draw another distinction between equality and equivalency of sets. If we look at these four sets, we can see the first two sets, Q and R, both contain the numbers 1 to 8. And you see all of them are there, they're just in a different order. So we can say that the set Q is equal to the set R. It has exactly the same members, even if they're in a different order. On the other hand, set S, if you count the members, it has 8 members. It has the same number of members as sets Q and R. So we can say it is equivalent. Set T is an infinite set and so it has neither the same number of members or the same members exactly as set Q, R or S. So it's not equal or equivalent to any of them. So to summarize that idea, two sets are equivalent if they have precisely the same number of members. In other words, if they have the same cardinality. On the other hand, two sets are equal if they contain exactly the same members, even if the members are in a different order. So we're heading towards a new set form, which is going to be more symbolic. And so we're going to need the various symbols for certain types of number set. The universal set, as we've said, is represented by a U, whatever it means. Then we have the natural numbers, and there are actually two symbols for this. In fact, there are four. The natural numbers are the numbers that we could count objects with, and that means all the positive integers. There are two forms of this set, one which includes zero, you can see there, and one which does not, one which starts from the number one. And both these sets have additional symbols. N0 
can be represented by a W, and that represents the whole numbers, but includes zero. And N1 sometimes is just written as N, although this is also quite ambiguous. However, Z is the set of all integers. How are the integers different from the natural numbers? Well, the integers are all whole numbers, including negative whole numbers. So Q generally represents the rational numbers, which are any number that can be written as a ratio of two integers. That basically means writing them as a fraction where it is integer divided by integer. And then, of course, we have the real numbers, all possible points along the infinite real number line in both positive and negative directions. We can even talk about the complex numbers, which is including the imaginary plane, which is kind of at right angles to the real number line, if you like, and that can get quite complicated as well. But those are the basic types of sets that we will use. Those are the symbols that we're likely to use most, although, as I've said, there are other options. But now we need to start putting them into another type of set formation. So we need to talk about another set form. So far, we've either written our set out in words or we've used the list of elements in braces. And this is what is called roster form. A roster is a list of objects and roster form for a set is just writing out the set members using the braces as, as we have already seen. So this is roster form, but there is another way that we're going to look at, and it's more rigorous than using words, which might have double meanings, but it's more convenient than just writing out all the members in roster form every time. And we call this set builder form. And set builder form is about making a list of conditions almost that will decide whether something is in or outside your set. So set builder form, let's look at the previous sets that we looked at. So set A was A E I O U, and there we see it written out in set builder form along with B and C, the other example sets. So the vertical line, which is highlighted in blue on set A, means such that which could be interpreted as so that or making it true that. You'll see what I mean hopefully in a moment. So the syntax of the expression is to say that set A is the set of all X's such that X is a vowel in the English alphabet. So there we've in purple given our condition for X and we put it in words just to make it clear. X is a vowel in the English alphabet. So when you have something, look at it. Is it a vowel in the English alphabet? If it is, then it's a member of set A. So likewise with set B, set B is the set of all X's if X is a whole number from one to 12 inclusive. Again, in words there. So we're basically setting what members of our set are represented by an X, and then we're setting a condition for what is an X. How do we count an X? And so that is the syntax of set builder form. So the advantages of set builder form are actually not immediately obvious. You might think it's a bit complicated. Why not just use words? In the three basic examples, it would have been easier just to write out the set of whole numbers from 1 to 12, the set of English vowels, etc. So roster form that we have used before now states members of the set explicitly. And this is convenient if you have only a few members in your set, but if there's a lot, writing them all out is going to get impractical and we need a rule that we can apply to any object therefore to say is it in or outside the set 
and then we can apply that rule to any object to tell if it is a member of the set or not. So let's just check a few examples of set builder form out. You may remember these sets, set B and C, and we've added set D, which looks very similar. If we rewrite them in set builder form, set B will look like this. B is the set of all X's such that X is a member of N1 and X is less than 13. So you can see there we have two conditions here for X. We want it to be a member of the natural numbers and we want it to have a value less than 13. And in that way, we can check any number if it's a member of N1 can say okay what's this number 14 is it less than 13 no so it is not a member of set B so this is how set builder form gives us conditions for sets and if we look at set C then we can see a different set of conditions here we're using another variable set C is the set of all X such that X is equal to 2n so that means all x's will be equal to 2n. So now we need to describe n, and it says that n is a member of n1, the natural numbers excluding 0. So that way, when we start with the first natural number, that is 1, that means the first member of our set x is going to be 2 times 1, so that's 2. The next natural number is 2, so x is going to be 2 times 2, that's 4, and so on. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, etc. If we look at our next set, set D is in fact x equals 2 to the power of n. So when n equals 1, it's still a member of the natural numbers. So n is 1, x to the power of n is 2. When n is 2, x to the power of n is 4, and when n is 3, x to the power of n is 8, 16, 32, etc. So these are the sorts of mathematical expressions that we can use to count things in or out of our sets. So if we want to look at an example of the benefit of set builder form, Remember this set, set C, and we defined it as a positive even integer. We also saw it in a more complex set builder form. Now what about this set, set S? We can see there that X is a member of some very complicated expression in N, and that N is a member of N1. So we can go through this, and if you do calculate it, then when n equals 1, the corresponding member is 2. When n equals 2, the corresponding member is 4. When n equals 3, the member is 6. And then when n equals 4, the corresponding member is 32. So you can check that out yourself, but it's based on the idea that that second part of the expression is all multiplying together. And as long as n equals 1, 2, or 3, one of those will go to 0, and it will make the whole expression 0. Try it out yourself. It works. And what it means is that if you see a roster form saying, oh, it's a set that is 2, 4, 6, and then an ellipsis, you don't have an explicit way to tell the difference between set C or set S. So roster form can be ambiguous in this way, and set builder form is a way to avoid that. To be sure, if somebody did write out two, four, six ellipsis, they'd be pretty silly if they were expecting you to work out that it should be set S. So again, this is a slightly silly example, but it does show the general idea that sometimes with a complicated set, Set builder form is necessary to make sure that everything is clearly understood.